Hello good day viewers. Here is the continuation of our work on solving WIAC 2023 Mathematics Examination Objective Questions. Remember previously we stopped at question number 4 where we solve question 1 down to 4. So today we are going to start from question number 5 down to question number 9. So you can look at them in case if there is anyone you wish to skip. You can see question 5 is related to number base. Question 6 is logarithmic equation and here we have a proportion. Question 8 is factorization. Question 9 is a quadratic equation. Alright, let's get started. Alright, here is question number 5. We are asked to express 413 in base 7 down to a number in base 5. So since you are dealing with objective questions, if your calculator can convert between number bases, please just go ahead and do that. But in case you don't have such option, let me show you how to do that. First of all, you have to take this number, which is in base 7, convert it to base 10. So we have 413 in base 7. To convert it to base 10, you take 4, which is the first digit. You multiply by 7, which is the base. You add, you take 1, which is the second digit, multiply by 7 again, which is the base. Then lastly, the last digit, which is 3, multiply by the base. Then you assign index from 0, that is from the last number, 1, 2, like this. Now let us simplify. Um, from here, you can see 7 squared is 49, and 49 times 4 will give us 196. 196 plus... 7 to the power of 1 is 7 times 1 is 7 plus 7 to the power of 0 is 1 and 1 times 3 is 3. You can see that 7 plus 3 is 10 and if you add 10 to this number, you're going to obtain 206. And hence, 413 in base 7 is equal to 206 or 206 in base 10. So this is the number we are going to convert to base 5. And how can we do that? We are going to perform a successive division of this number, 206, by what? 5, since we are converting down to 5. So if you take the whole of this and divide by 5, you are going to obtain 41 with a remainder of 1. Then 5 again can divide this, how many times? 8 times with a remainder of 1 because 5 can divide 40. Then 5 can divide it one time with a remainder of 3, right? But now 5 cannot divide 1. So we stop here and take these numbers from this down to this. Therefore, 4, 1, 3 in base 7 is equal to, you start with this number, which is 1, then 3, then 1, 1 in base 5. So we have 1,311 in base 5. Let's check the option. You can see it is option what? B. Now let us move on to question number 6. Alright, here is question number 6. Though it is not clear, but let me rewrite it. We have log of x base 3 plus log of x minus 8 base 3. The whole of this equal to 2. This is exactly what we have. And we asked to solve the equation. What you should remember is that the arguments must be greater than 0 which means that x must be greater than 8. So if you are dealing with objectives, you know that definitely the answer must be 9 because from the domain, x must be greater than 8. But, but let us just solve it. Since we have common logs, we take a log to base 3, then we multiply the argument since we have addition. We have x multiplied by x minus 8, the whole of this equal to 2. And from definition, if you take this 3, you raise it on to 2, you must get the argument. Therefore, let us expand this. x times x is x squared minus 8 times x is x. And this is equal to 3 to the power of 2, which is 9. And hence, this is x squared minus 8x minus 9 if you take it to the other side. And this is equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation that can be factorized. Let us think of two numbers. We can multiply to get 9. When we add them, we get negative 8. Uh, you should know that the numbers must be uh, negative 9 and positive 1. 
negative 9, positive 1. If you set each factor to be equal to 0, we have this either equal to 0 or x plus 1 equal to 0. From here, x equal to 9 or x equal to negative 1. But remember, x must be greater than 8. And hence, we are going to consider x equal to 9 as our solution. But remember, I told you, once you look at the domain, since this must be greater than 0, x must be greater than 0. But from here, if x minus 8 is greater than 0, definitely x must be greater than 8. And the only number that is greater than 8 here is 9. So without solving, since you're dealing with objectives, nobody will ask you to show working. You can simply tick 9. Now let us move on to question number 7. All right, here is question number seven. The question reads, Mr. Manu is four times as old as his son, Adu. Seven years ago, the sum of their ages was 76 years. How old is Adu, which is the son? Okay, I would like to declare the son's age, the current, the current age as what? X. So let uh, Adu's age. be x therefore the father who is what manu will be what x times 4 which is 4x because they said what he is four times as old as the son and um seven years back seven years back meaning we are going to subtract uh seven from each age here uh, the sum of the ages was what? 76. So what are we going to do? 7 years back, the sum will be what? X minus 7. Plus, because we are taking sum, the father's age is 4 times this, the, the, the son, but we have to subtract 7 as well, 7 years back. And we have the result to be what? 76. So let's add this together. We have X and 4X making 5 X's. And this and this will give us negative 14. This is equal to 76. Let us take this one to the other side. We have 5x equal to 76 plus 14 as it crosses over. And this is 90. This is 5x equal to 90. And um, x equal to 90 divided by 5, which is 18 x equal to 18 but what is this x remember x is what the age of the sun and that's exactly what we are looking for which is what option c now let us move on to question number eight question eight we are asked to factorize completely let me remind you something this is very simple difference of two squares if you have a squared minus b squared this is the same thing as a plus b multiplied by a minus b. So since we are given something of this kind where our a is x and b is y plus z, to factorize it, let me bring it down here. We have x squared minus y plus z whole squared. By applying the same principle, we take x, we add it to y plus z right we multiply we take x again we subtract and if you're subtracting the negative sign will affect all the two times so we have minus y minus z and there's nothing we can do to this expression again so what is the right option x plus y plus z times x minus y minus z which is option b right here so the last question for today is question number nine all right, question number nine. We are asked to find the roots of the quadratic equation 3m squared minus 2m minus 6 to 5. Um, we can solve this equation by factorization. First of all, you take the leading coefficient, you multiply by the constant term. So let me write the numbers here. 3 multiplied by negative 6 to 5. And this will give us what? Negative 1, 9 to 5. Now, think of two numbers you can multiply together to get this number. But when you add them together, you get negative 2. And the numbers are definitely 
uh, negative 15 and positive 13. These two numbers, if you multiply them together, you're going to have 10, uh, negative 195, and you, when you add them together, you get negative 2. So how should we factorize this? We take m, we minus 15, but since the leading coefficient is not 1, you divide by 3. Then the next number, m plus 13, you also divide by that number 3. You set the whole of this equal to 0, which implies that either m minus 5, right, equal to 0 because 15 divided by 3 is 5, or m plus 13 divided by 3 equal to 0. So m here could either be positive 5 if this crosses over, or m equal to negative 13 divided by 3 if positive 13 divided by 3 crosses over. So where is the right answer? M is 5 and negative 13 divided by 3, which is option C. I think let us stop here for today and begin with question number 10 tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Do share to your learning colleagues. Bye-bye.